I wish I could be there with you all, but sadly the ongoing COVID outbreak here has made that not possible. Our present predicament is quite relevant to this talk, however, as I'll be talking about using game technology to be together when you can't be together in person. I'm a programmer and designer based in Sydney. My primary interest is narrative games, but I've recently developed an interest in social games. I'm here to talk with you about a series of projects I made in collaboration with Cecile Richard, who is based in Melbourne. Cecile is a graphic designer and game maker, most well known for their award-winning games, Novena, Endless Scroll, and Under a Star Called Sun. Before we continue, I want to acknowledge that I'm talking to you from the unceded lands of the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Eora Nation. Cecile is based in the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to elders past and present. This, this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. I'm here to talk to you about using game technology in adapting in-person events to online events. Using a case study of our experiences making online spaces, we've been calling zones for free play in 2020 and 2021 and the research and game making workshop in 2020. In total, we've now made four zones. After around February 2020, most in-person events didn't happen due to the pandemic. Events were cancelled, postponed or moved online. One event that was forced to move online was Free Play Independent Games Festival. Located in Melbourne, Free Play is the world's longest running independent games festival. In addition to the main conference of talks and panels, Free Play normally runs a variety of other events, including workshops, screenings, board games, experimental theatre, and their night market. The night markets were a highlight of free play for both Cecile and myself. They're a mix of games party, community art fair, um, art installations, and dance party, all set up in venues decorated to feel really magical. One of the, one of the tiny rays of light during this global tragedy has been the creative ways people have responded to this moment. Like Lack Arcade, is an art gallery for video games located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the US. It is run by games academics Paolo Pettuccini and Heather Kelly, who are both at Carnegie Mellon, along with graphic designer, like, um, like, um, like um, along with like a um, graphic designer like um, Tenley Shimida. You know, like um, Like Likes monthly shows were another event that the pandemic disrupted. Paolo responded by creating a lo-fi networked recreation of Like Like Arcade effectively demaking the RL art gallery into a browser-based mini MMO. Soon after the first Like Like Online, Paolo open sourced the code base. This would go on to be the framework we'd use to build the zone. In previous years, Freeplay had streamed online talks in addition to the in-person conference. So I was confident they could successfully move the festival online. But thinking of the night markets, I was sad about what would be missing from an online version of the festival. So when I saw Like Like Online was open sourced, I saw an opportunity to capture some of that magic digitally. Like okay. Cecile's game Continental Drift had been part of the opening Like Like Online exhibition. So I asked them what they thought of it and ran the idea of an online night market by them. Cecile liked the concept. And so, and so I then pitched it to the director of Free Play, Chad Toprek. Through working with Cecile, the idea of an online night market became the free play zone. The zone ended up becoming the virtual venue for the festival in 2020. In their art for the zone, Cecile evoked DIY venues and the magical spaces that free play events are usually held in. The zone came from a nostalgic impulse. I was like, I'm looking back on past events in the pre pandemic world, but also a utopian impulse, seeking to create a virtual space where people could be together in a time where we could not be together in person. It was embraced by the free play community in a really lovely way, which was really special for us. But like, um, like the way that Like Like works is it consists of a number of rooms, which are essentially these kind of like single screen environments. Each room is like a separate chat, including all of the players that are currently in that room. The zone consisted of a number of rooms, including an outside, the screening room, the backyard and an exhibition space. On the right there, you can see one of um, Cecile's designs for the zone and how the different rooms would connect to each other. 
uh, they're like outside was something we followed like like and including I think having an outside is quite important it helps establish the virtual space as a destination somewhere you go to if you think of the the concept of the magical circle from theories of play where there's like a line that you cross where the rules of the outside world no longer apply and instead the rules of a game apply the outside room is the room where we cross the line and where we enter the magic circle fitting with this once users had entered the other rooms we noticed it rarely return outside in fact the main time we saw users return to the outside was when they were saying their goodbyes when they were crossing back over the edge of the magic circle to return to their real lives we saw one user even role play waiting for a taxi to arrive um, in the outside before um, before leaving us I like uh, like um, originally we had more ambitious plans and my like first plans were to build a whole night market but uh, this is a project we were building in our spare time so due to lack of time we're forced to scope down to something more minimal but I think that 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 scoping down actually worked in our favor you know as as like as like later on I tried other online events which also had online spaces I found that the ones with the larger spaces were often actually less social and because people were spread over a wider space you would not always achieve the critical mass to get a good conversation happening and um, to create that real sense of an atmosphere of being in a space with other people rather than just being in a space by yourself. Like. So then during, during, during like a Melbourne International Games Week, Free Play holds a showcase of experimental, unique and personal games called Parallels. We're still not safe to gather in person. So all 2020 games events, like um, all of the Games Week 2020 games events were held online. We contacted Chad to see about making a zone for Parallels. He liked the idea. In 2019, Parallels had been held in Melbourne's Capital Theatre. So Chad asked to make us to make a parallel zone that was a recreation of the Capital Theatre. Parallel zone was a success, but the sheer number of people there was quite overwhelming on a personal level. At times, it was very chaotic, which is exciting, but also quite intense. And it's like earlier in 2020, people had started talking about Zoom fatigue as everything had moved online, everything had become a video call or a live stream, and people were feeling tired. People also humorous, humorously contrasted the experience of video calls with video games. Australian games academic Brendan Keogh also, also commented on how essential being embodied was for natural conversations. This very much aligned with what we'd experienced with the zone Though their avatars were lo-fi and the possibilities for expression limited, they gave people a surprising sense of, of being, being like a physical being, that, that it was possible to move around freely while chatting. That, that even though this is quite basic, it was still enough expression to feel embodied. And a bit later on, after free play, Brendan actually contacted us about the zone. And, and like, because like, Brendan was also planning an online workshop around his research on game making. I wanted to have a zone as part of the workshop. Bennett had designed the workshop as an asynchronous conference featuring speakers from around the world. He wanted it to be an alternative to conferences, which happened as exhausting all day Zoom calls. Instead, the research and game making workshop featured pre-recorded talks, which could be watched when best for participants, a discord for asynchronous conversation, brief Zoom catch-ups, and the zone for more informal hangouts. Um, with the with the particular academic context of this workshop, we experimented with features which were less playful and more information driven, such as the tab for reading the current um, current abstract for the current talk, which you can see in the utmost screenshot there. Um, so this zone we built for the workshop consisted of both a conference space and also an exhibition of Brendan's research. The exhibition consisted of four rooms displaying quotes from Brendan's interviews with over 150 Australian game developers located both around the country and overseas. Brendan previously presented on this work in many places, including academic conferences at GDC 
and as a closing keynote for the Games Connect Asia Pacific Conference for 2019. I highly recommend seeking these um, talks out because they paint a more complicated and nuanced portrait of game creation than just people like talking about how much money the games industry makes. Next, like, I'm adding all of these quotes into the exhibition it was one of my favorite parts of making the show. It was a chance to really like sit with all of these quotes from different creators, sharing the quite sort of like like quite like quite like vulnerable personal feelings about making games and all of the challenges involved with that. And like before free play this year, Cecile suggested we contacted Chad about making another zone for free play 2021. Initially, the festival was going to be a hybrid festival with a mixture of in-person events and online talks, but an outbreak forced the festival to go entirely online, and the zone moved from just being a throwback to the previous year's festival to a central part of the festival once again. And as well, one of the, the special parts of this, this festival was pretty play collaborated with Australian literary magazine Voiceworks to launch their Geist issue, and 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 like the people from the magazine and the magazine's audience watched the launch of, this, of, of, of the new magazine issue from inside the zone. They could also visit a classroom complete with a haunted cupboard where, where like they, they could read different pieces from the recent VoiceWorks issues. It was really great to see how like a non-games audience would react to the zone and actually quite embrace it, which was really exciting for us. So some of our learnings from the zone were that in, including a sort of exterior or an outside to a virtual space really helps make it feel more like a destination and helps establish the boundaries of the event. Um, event spaces can also express the spirit and the values of the event. We found that doing that was really important to attendees and made it, made it feel like they were at the real free play, even if it was a virtual version of it. And um, as well, the smaller spaces were often better, that they help, help you reach the critical mass of people to make the space feel more social and lead to lively conversations. Zone screenshots were also very tweetable, which really helped introduce the festival to people who might not have otherwise heard of it and helped create further engagement for the event. Also found that people just enjoy playfulness in event spaces and that that, that provides an extra reason for them to come back and to keep engaging. Thank you so much for your time and for listening to our experiences making the zone. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to discuss, please contact me via email or on Twitter. I'd like to thank Cecile for being a wonderful person to work with on all of these projects. I think that the, the, the like zone would not be as special without their work and probably wouldn't exist at all. I'd also like to thank Chad and Brendan for their trust and belief in these projects. I really appreciate that as we brought them together. Um, I'd also like to thank all of the Zone fans whose screenshots are borrowed for this presentation, thank you for documenting all of these special moments throughout the events. Really glad to have them as a record of it. Um, so on the side, I've listed a few links. If you'd like to learn more about the Zone, we gave a talk at Freeplay 2021, delving into the making of the Zone we created for Freeplay 2020 and some of the different inspirations we had for it. Uh, Cecile has also made a thread like reflecting on the zone. And Brendan has also written a thread about the research and game making workshop. Uh, thank you all again. Enjoy your New Zealand GDC.